Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the Nürburgring in Germany for the latest instalment of the FIA Formula 3 European Championship race 31 of the season uh, coming up. It's the 10th event of 11. We've got three races here this weekend and then three more to come at Hockenheim. And then we'll know who is going to be our 2015 champion. The cars on the grid. We had a warm day yesterday. Very sunny conditions for the qualifying sessions. But we woke up this morning to thick fog and a slight delay to proceedings in the qualifying sessions, which came before this. And much cooler temperatures as well. The drivers, though, are on the grid, ready to go for this latest round of the championship with uh, it finally poised between the top four and the point standings. Felix Rosenquist is the points leader. So close he has come to being the champion in years gone by. He had a good start to the season and one or two rocky patches, uh, particularly at Poe, where he, uh, he didn't get onto the podium, but he has strung some run together at Zandvoort, the three races there at Spielberg, and then last time out at Portimao, he finished on the podium in every single race. So it's nine podiums on the bounce, including four race wins in amongst those uh, nine last races. So Felix Rosenquist got 378 points. Tonio Giovinazzi is second on 343.5 points. As we see, one of the newcomers to this very full grid, the Latvian driver there, Harold Schlegemilch, who's got some uh, Formula 3 experience in the past with the Artline engineering team. He's raced in German F3. He's also done some a little bit of Formula Renault racing, some GT racing. And then third in the championship, Charles Leclerc in his uh, debut season, 324.5 points and 309 points after a very good weekend at Portimao. Back on form for the British driver, Jake Dennis, who's still very much in this championship fight with his sixth win of the season coming at Portimao and a couple of second place finishes. So I'm Chris Hartley to talk you through the race today. And alongside me, it's a very good morning today, Richardson. Chris. Formula 3 just couldn't be more exciting. It's absolutely... The, the season this year has been blistering and you and I have been the beneficiary of some conversations as we look at our poll sitter, Felix Rosenquist, Kel Surprise. Um, <laughs> we've been the beneficiary of some conversations of names that are being bandied around that are going to be coming into the FIA Formula 3 European Championship in the next couple of years. We're not going to tease you with those names now because nothing is confirmed, but, you know, for the next, for the next few seasons, it's looking just as exciting for uh, FIA Formula 3. That's Nick Cassidy. Yeah, Nick Cassidy, who's uh, dropped in and uh, out of the championship. He's concentrating this year on Japanese Formula 3, in which he is the joint championship leader with a round to spare, which happens in a few weekends' time. So Nick Cassidy, who's uh, popped up in the championship a couple of times yes. over the last couple of seasons, uh, going well in the first qualifying session. It go quite so well in the second qualifying session, which determined the grid for races two and three. But the New Zealander is second on uh, the grid. He would have been third, but George Russell, who had a, has been fantastic in qualifying of late, had an engine change, so gets a 10-place grid penalty. George was actually second fastest, but will start, I'm afraid, 12th for the races. Callum Eilock with his best qualifying session so far. Another rookie this season. Uh, the car in driver, pretty handy in the first round at Silverstone. Uh, but uh, he's, he's been consistently picking up the points. I spoke to him yesterday, felt like he's been improving in himself, but slightly frustrated that results haven't really shown that. The qualifying has been such a big thing and he's sorted that out with a very good, uh, well, fourth fastest time and that put him third on the grid with George Russell being uh, penalised. There's uh, Jake Dennis, who was pretty uh, cool and happy about fourth place uh, on the grid, the Prima Power team driver, who's good mates with uh, Felix Rosenquist. Said he maybe hasn't quite got the pace to match Felix, but he's pretty happy with the car all in all. In all. P3 in the championship for the Van Amersfoort Racing Charles Leclerc, who has has perhaps not been quite as prolific over the last few races mm. as I expected him to be. He's been a bit quiet by his standards, Chris. You've spoken to him. Any reason for that? Uh, it's uh, Qualifying has, has struggled a little bit. He was the one of the best qualifiers of the first four or five races of the championship. Uh, and that's, he's thereabouts, but he's not quite been where he has been. He's been fifth, sixth in and around there, whereas he was quite often on the front row of the grid for the first few rounds of the championship. And when it's so competitive, mm. it's hard to move forward. Tonio Giovinazzi, who had a fantastic weekend at Zandvoort last weekend to uh, win the Masters Championship uh, in that one-off event. Uh, the first Italian to do so in its long and illustrious history. And he romped off into the distance. Uh, George Russell was his closest rival in second place. Will that be a nice confidence boost for Giovinazzi coming into this round, do you think, you know, to take that Masters title? I think so, yeah. Yeah, I mean, not, not all the big guns were there. No. Uh, Rosenquist wasn't there. Dennis wasn't there. Leclerc wasn't there. Uh, but, you know, there were still some very good drivers on the grid. And uh, he did a did a stellar job really he was uh, pretty untouchable particularly the qualifying race which he won by a, a country mile 
Michael Jensen there has had a, a good uh, qualifying session. Seventh on the grid for this one, he will be. Eighth on the grid, Marcus Pommer. Doing OK, the motor park uh, driver, motor park, the German team. With lots of history and lots of expertise, but new to this particular championship. Running quite a few drivers. Last time I commentated on Marcus Pommer at this circuit, it was about five years ago when he was racing in Formula 2. He had a, a good campaign, but a bit of a nightmarish weekend, so hopefully it will go better for him here. Speaking to Jake Dennis as well, he says this is a circuit which has not been kind to him in, in the past in either Formula 3 or Formula Renault uh, when he raced in the Euro Cup. He's had all sorts of technical issues here in the past, so he says he kind of owes me one this circuit, he feels. Hopefully he'll have better luck. Sergio Setikamara on the podium at uh, Zandvoort, just uh, reminding himself of the way around the circuit here. But the Brazilian is another driver that's really improved in the last couple of rounds. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this way, that way, this gear, brake here, just getting it programmed into his mind. Fair enough, I suppose, though, because, you know, unlike, you know, lots of rookies in the championship this year, but unlike some of the drivers, he's learning the circuits. He's, he's not that familiar with the tracks. So he comes from uh, ninth on the grid. Argemini is next that we see then, who uh, rounds out the top 10 on the grid. Argemini there in uh, the number 29 car, who at uh, Portimao was being coached uh, by uh, Karen Chanhock. Yep. And uh, really nice chap is Arjamani, front runner in the BRDC Formula 4 Championship last year. Uh, spoke to him yesterday uh, before the second qualifying session. He said, I'm, I'm kind of just losing out a little bit everywhere on the lap. There's no one sector where I'm struggling. It's just a bit here and a bit there. And he says it's just a confidence thing with the car. You know, you've got guys like Felix Rosenquist who mm. know the car, know the circuit like the back of their hand. He's having to learn the car and the circuit at all the rounds. But Arjun, who's run by the Van Amersfoort team, who ran uh, Max Verstappen so successfully to a number of race wins and third in the title last year, uh, he's, uh, he's doing a good job this year. He's had certainly some memorable races, the Indian driver. He's only 19th in the championship, but he's been up in the top six a few times. He had a podium at Zandvoort as well uh, in the championship round there. And he was in the top six at Zandvoort uh, last weekend at the Masters race as well. So things uh, looking good for him if he sticks with the championship for another season. I think we'll really see him moving on next year. So there is one of our key championship contenders. A nicer man in the paddock, you will not find Antonio Giovinazzi very laid back, but let me tell you, when he needs to you know, be ruthless on the track, he, he can he be, can't, can't he? he? Yes. yes, it was just a, a few weekends ago, of course, where he um, was out of a single seater and into a uh, DTM car, uh, sitting in for Timo Scheider in Russia, and did a very, very creditable job as well. As, uh, that's a lovely shot of the Jake Dennis car, and uh, Jake Dennis there, of course, uh, with support from the uh, Racing Steps Foundation. Yeah, complaining, he's slightly sore back this weekend. He's oh, one really? of the taller drivers, and he, he's a bit cramped up in that cockpit. He's, right. uh, he's uh, yeah, had a, a long season of uh, lots of races, lots of testing as well, and, uh, yeah, it's just starting to feel the effects now. Super fit guy, but you know, so there's, there's a lot of him to try and cram into that car. And we should make clear, not son of Ron Dennis. Not son of Ron Dennis, no, <laughs> but the legendary Steve Dennis. <laughs> Top kart racer. Uh, so there's uh, Jake's mate, Felix Rosenquist. These two seem to get on like a house on fire. And uh, yes, lots of people, uh, there's, there's talk that Ron Dennis' son might be coming into the championship at some point in the future. Uh, and then some people jumped to the conclusion that he was <laughs> yes. already here and it was, it was Jake Dennis, but it's, it's not. And Felix was quite happy to make fun of all of that on Twitter, apparently, <laughs> winding his, uh, his teammates up. But Felix is on fantastic form here. It's the, it's the must-win season for Felix. We've said this yes. a number of yes. times because he's been second in the championship, third in the championship. He is far and away the most experienced driver on the grid in terms of the number of races he's done, the number of race wins he's had. He's on his 14th pole position of the season alone here. And uh, that doesn't mean it gets any easier, though, because you get these quick drivers coming in like Charles Leclerc. You get the drivers who've been in for two, three seasons like Jake Dennis and Tony Giovinazzi, also hugely competitive. But he has started to put this run together now, as I say, with nine podiums on the bounce included in that four race wins. He won two of the races at Portugal. Prima Power Team, they were the championship winning team for the last couple of seasons as well with Esteban Ocon last year. And uh, they... You know, just seem to give the, a, a good car almost every round here with all their expertise and set up the Italians. And uh, even though Jake Dennis said the car didn't feel brilliant at the last round at Portimao, mm. they were up there mm. and uh, you know winning between them the races. It was really interesting at uh, Portimao that uh, Prima seemed to have unlocked something at that circuit that others hadn't. Yeah. Um, and uh, it was really interesting to watch over the course of uh, over the course of the weekend how they were beginning to unlock little bits more. Every other team were beginning to uh, beginning to catch up. 
Okay, so Nürburgring race 31 then in what is a long and arduous season for the young stars that race in FIA Formula 3. Again, we're reaching the sharp end of the championship, aren't we? And uh, it is as competitive and as compelling as ever. Well, it's 28, actually, isn't it? I mean, graphics wrong there. We had nine rounds so far, so it's uh, it's getting towards crunch time for the championship. There is a possibility it could be decided this weekend. It seems unlikely, but you never know if uh, one of the championship contenders has a blinder and others struggle. That's Fritz just... won't like that. He will not like being the centre of attention, <laughs> Fritz Van Amersfoort, from the uh, Van Amersfoort team as we watch Charles Leclerc there in uh, the number seven car. And uh, there, good, good shot of the uh, Nürburgring circuit as the dam through the Hatzenberg turn. Here's the uh, grid then. It's Rosenquist and Cassidy, and then it's Eilert and Dennis and Leclerc, Giovinazzi, Jensen, Pommer, Seta Kamara, and Arjun Maini then rounding out the first five rows of the grid. Yep, that's the uh, the top ten as it stands. And watch out as well, as I say, for the driver who starts 12th because he was really second fastest in qualifying. He was second fastest in qualifying. Had to change an engine on the Carlin car and that means automatically he gets a 10-place grid penalty. Uh, the other driver that has also picked up a 10-place grid penalty is Alessia Lorandi, uh, the ex-kart racer, the rookie, the Italian, was 17th fastest, has been pushed back to 27th. Because if you change an engine, you automatically get a 10-place grid penalty for the next three races. Incidentally, George Russell saying what a fantastic job that Carlin did because they discovered just before the qualifying session that he got this issue with mm. the engine and they had just about half an hour to change an engine and they did it. He only missed the first two or three minutes of qualifying, went out and banged it uh, into the second fastest time. So fantastic effort for the BRDC Autosport Young Driver of the Year from last year. There we see 3.6 kilometres this circuit and with a you know, capacity grid of cars, trying to get a lap time in qualifying yesterday. It was not easy. It was pretty crowded out there. So maybe another driver to watch out for is another of the Prima drivers, Dave. Lance Stroll, the Canadian, mm. who's really, you know, really got his act together the last few rounds. He's been really quick in qualifying and the races. He was really quick in free practice in the top three in the second qualifying session, but he got traffic in the first qualifying session, which is why he only starts 11th on the grid for this one. You're right. And... Uh there, we just had a vision of uh, Lance Stroll's father on the left-hand side of the uh, picture there as uh, a driver's... Now, if you're on the front row or the first couple of rows, you've got a long while to wait before this packed mm. grid all comes together and we get the green flag from the marshal at the rear of the pack, which will release the cars away. 33 cars lining up on the grid for this race. Even at the end of the season, it's uh, it's, it's a busier grid than it's it's been throughout the entire course of the uh, the 12 months, really. Lots of drivers tasting it out, I think, for next year as well. There's Felix Rosenquist then. Can he get another race victory here? It will be a hat-trick if he does. The red lights come on. The race is about to get underway. Nick Cassidy, his teammate, is alongside as the race gets underway here at the Nürburgring. Looks like another good start for Giovinazzi. Watch for the yellow chick on your IAM car. And a good start for Dennis as well. He's going to try and get himself into third place. It's going to be three by three going into the first turn then at the hairpin. Oh. Bit of contact there. I think Dennis got a little touch from behind. And he sends out wide then Giovinazzi. So the two fast starters, Dave, despite all... All of their efforts are going to end up losing three, four, five places here. Callum Eilert, I think, was getting at the inside line there and caused them both the problem. So they ran out wide. Callum gets stuck in there and it gets a very good start. But it is the top two that stay as they are. Eilert there in the Red Bull livery is there in third place and having to defend his position now from Charles Leclerc, who's also benefited from all of that. He's in fourth. Well, Jake Dennis was the big loser there, wasn't he? He got punted out. We just saw Michaela Beretta there mm. uh, going out onto the uh, onto the grass. And it is, you know, every single turn is going to be a pinch point right at the start of the race because so many cars as, uh, well, Rosenquist begins to gap now, isn't he? And, uh, of course, he's the one that's been unaffected by that. A whole gaggle of car there. And uh, is that damage to the uh, front of Dennis's car? Well, let's hope not from his, uh, his point of view. Pretty, I was for a high shot going into the first corner. It looked like there might have been a bit of contact, and uh, Diavanazzi was trying to go around the outside, so yeah, he had to go out wide himself. Oh, it went down the middle of everybody and uh, and gained positions. But of course, being on pole position away from all that, Felix Rosenquist, a bit of bad luck as well for Matt Solomon. Two or three cars running wide there, and he was in the wrong place at the wrong time there and had to, uh, had to take evasive action. So Matt Solomon losing positions as a result of others' incidents there.
Uh, sure enough, uh, car number two, Jake Dennis, has been shown the uh, oh, black and man. orange flag, so there is damage to the Jake Dennis car. We can see him tumbling down the order, I'm sorry to say. Disaster for a championship contender here. Black and orange flag means you've got to go off the circuit. There's a technical issue with the car, which is usually related to bits of bodywork hanging off or uh, fluid coming out of the car, which is deemed to be dangerous for everybody else out there. So, absolute uh, shame for Jake, who is the second most winning driver of the year. He's taken six race wins this year, but hasn't quite had the consistency of one or two others. Giovinazzi's back in 11th place after uh, that delay as well. So he's now trying to uh, work his way up the order, trying to get ahead of Sergio Setti Camara there, who's in the blue and white motor park car, the Brazilian. And uh, Giovinazzi has got Gustavo Menezes right behind him, hasn't he? He's running in uh, P12 at the moment. The two bright yellow cars there, as you say. Sergio Setacamara in the number 23 car is uh, uh, running in P10 at the moment. There is uh, Marcus Pommer in uh, car number 34, you can see, uh, running in uh, P6. He's chasing down uh, Mikkel Jensen. Uh, somebody that really, really impressed me at Portimao, who's running in P8, is Santino Ferrucci from 13th on the grid. He's made mm. it five places already. So the young American who's only in his, well, it's his second season, but it's his first full season, really, because he only did half of 2014. Doing a good job oh. here. Look at this. That's, uh, that's defensive driving, isn't, isn't it? it? The just... run down into the corner, going from uh, Arjun Mine, trying to fend off Lance Stroll. Lance going around the outside here. That's a brave move on the way to the first corner. It doesn't quite pay off, though. And the Canadian has to uh, sit tight. And then he actually has to defend his own position from Sergio Setti Camara. And they've all got Giovinazzi coming after them. Credit to him for having a go, though. Yeah. He's not, he's not shy of having a go as Lance Stroll. He's an entertaining driver as Giovinazzi steals a position there. Good move on a part of the course you don't often see overtaking as he gets past Eddie Kamara. And uh, he's got his teammate trying to get in the action as well. Another American driver, Gustavo Menezes, in the other bright yellow Gigonia Iam uh, car. So uh, back up into the points now for Giovinazzi. And every point might count in this championship, the way it's going. But there is Felix Rosenquist leading the race. His nearest two rivals in this race are not championship contenders either. But the 1-2-3 uh, of Rosenquist, Cassidy and Isla really have broken away from the rest of the pack here, haven't they? Uh, Rosenquist with a uh, margin of a second as they all head through this uh, NGK chicane and are moving up the order there for Tipoldi. So here's a replay of the start. Another great start from Felix Rosenquist. Giovinazzi, you can see well quick off the line wasn't he yeah. but it was when they got to the braking zone that it all went a bit pear shaped so look at Callum Eilat there trying to go for the inside line Dennis makes a good start they're three together and uh, I think the contact came from the clerk yes, into right. the back of uh, Dennis Giovinazzi had nowhere to go but off the track to avoid Dennis who was forced out wide and Callum Eilat just drove past all of them and got himself up to third place is of course where he started but he's, he was definitely under threat there a bit of Jake as his car the Prima power team examining what the problem could be and um, we haven't seen this yet but Jake has been into the pits for a nose change and of course he's going to be well well out of the points now I'm afraid stone last a lap down just gone over the start finish line 33rd I'm afraid for Jake Dennis so much frustration and he'll have to try and make the most of the other two races now this weekend Callum Eilert making the most of this, though. He's not going to be as high up the grid for the races uh, later on in the weekend. The second session didn't quite work out as well for him. He was 11th quickest in the second qualifying session. He'll be put up to 10th because of George Russell's uh, unfortunate problem with his engine. George, incidentally, is currently running in 13th place, so he's actually lost out. He hasn't gone forward as I thought he might. So top three then, and... Uh then we see into uh, P4 there, there is uh, Charles Leclerc, then it is uh, Mikkel Jensen, then it's Pommer and Ferrucci and Arjun Maini P8 with Lance Stroll P9 and, as you rightly said, Giovinazzi into the points, P10, and that is the uh, Gigonio IM car of Antonio Giovinazzi that we watch right now, centre of the screen. I think it might be quite good fun watching uh, Tony try and yes, charge his way through now. Be right. he, he's not gonna, he's certainly not going to be satisfied with 10th, is he? If he gets a chance, he's going to try and get up the order and get as many points as he can. It could be like, quite lively there, because he's got Lance Stroll who he's trying to get past, who's also a quick driver, yeah. who's also uh, you know, trying to make his way forward. Actually, Stroll has, uh, has dropped back, hasn't he, from Arjun Miner, who's doing a really good job in eighth place Indian driver. There he is in the yellow and white Van Amersfoort car. And there is one of his teammates, Charles Leclerc. Now, he's, un he's under pressure a bit here from Jensen, he is. isn't he? Yeah, Michael Jensen going well in fifth place. Good start from seventh. I know we had a couple running wide, but he made the most of that. 
the Muka Motorsport driver. And uh, he is definitely shadowing Charles Leclerc, who's you know been pretty quick this weekend so far, but not on the, the sort of mega pace that we've been come to expect from him after that brilliant start to the year he had. You're right. Jensen now, though, having to switch um, uh, switch disciplines, really, to uh, defence over Marcus Palmer. And then uh, Palmer himself has got Santino Ferrucci, who we know uh, just how uh, keen Ferrucci is to uh, move up the order. So that little gaggle together there, that's going to be very exciting. Where are we? Uh, uh, fire, lap five of uh, 25, so very, very early stages of this race. Meanwhile, Felix Rosenquist has set the fastest lap of the race. Quickest in sector one, quickest in sector two, quickest in sector three. 121.395 seconds. There is a newcomer, Harold Schlegermilch, the Latvian driver. Trying to uh, gain uh, positions here, move himself up the order. At the moment, he's 32nd behind Nicky Pola. That, of course, brand new car into the championship, isn't Absolutely, it? Absolutely, yeah. So, you know, a big ask, especially at this level with this yes. amount of competition to, to hop in and expect it to be, you know, up there in the pack. But uh, they'll use this to develop the drive of the car and uh, perhaps we'll see more of him next season. Felix Rosenquist is on another flying lap here, fastest in the first two sectors. So he's trying to break, break away now from Nick Cassidy, who's there in second place, the double Toyota racing champion from New Zealand. Callum Eilert looking for his first ever podium in his first season. Not only, let's remind you, of car race, of uh, Formula 3, but of car racing. There he is, Callum Eilert. Just come straight out of karting, much like Max Verstappen did uh, last year. Alessio Lorandi has done the same. Charles Leclerc fourth. Now, you look at the contrast, the, the form of Felix Rosenquist of late, who can't stop finishing on the podium. Mm -hmm. And then you look at Charles Leclerc, who is third in the championship. The first 10 races of the year, nine of them, Charles Leclerc was on the podium. The last 10 races coming into this one, he hasn't been on the podium at all. He's, re he's been picking up points, fourth, fifth, sixth. But I think he's going to lose struggling. out here as well, you know. Mm. Uh, Jensen has um, gone back to uh, attacking him and really keeping him under pressure. And it was the point I was making really right at the beginning of the programme, Chris, that you know, Leclerc looked really, really good at the beginning of the season. It seems to really have gone off. And, you know, you say in conversation with him is he's really under pressure now. Jensen really is up in the game, isn't he? And Leclerc is having to defend like never before. Of course, Jensen uh, remains under threat from uh, Marcus Pommer and Santino Ferrucci as well. And uh, there is Antonio Giovinazzi who is uh, running in uh, P10. But there is Leclerc and uh, Mikkel Jensen then. It's P4, P5. This little battle that is... Uh, underway here and it's uh, Santino Ferrucci behind the car of uh, Marcus Pommer as they all go through the NGK chicane not much between any of them not at all Mikkel Jensen then a Danish driver in that uh, number 27 Muka Motorsport car but with lots of experience of this track in fact he describes it as his second home because right. he raced in the uh, German uh, Formula Masters Championship which he won and knows the circuit very well indeed so he's definitely itching to get past Leclerc into fourth place before the top three get away is Nabil Jeffrey had a good top six finish at Zandvoort last uh, weekend in the Masters the Malaysian driver coming under threat here and I think about to lose a place on the way into the braking zone looks like he has Alex Olbon who we haven't uh, really talked about yet the uh, the driver who's been going so well in his first season of the championship, really disappointing qualifying yesterday, particularly for the second and third races. But he's 14th on the grid for this one. And Alex Olborn, who's been on the podium several times this year and he's one of the leading rookies, uh, trying to make his way into the points if he can. Leclerc now has uh, broken away a little bit from Mikkel Jensen, who's probably preferred to just back off a little bit and uh, not run in the dirty air. And uh, we'll have another charge, one suspects, for that uh, P5 place in Ducos. There's Antonio Giovinazzi then running in uh, P10. Lance Stroll ahead of him is P9. The 16-year-old Callum Eilat has uh, set the fastest first sector of anybody in the race so far. So only 1.2 seconds behind Nick Cassidy now. It's Callum as we see Charles Leclerc fighting away, wrestling the wheel, coming out of the chicane there to try and uh, keep it under control as he came out of the NGK chicane. So it, it is Rosenquist, the championship leader, that leads the way, looking for his 10th win of the season. Nick Cassidy in second place. Callum Eilat going well in third position. Charles Leclerc fourth there, you can see. Fifth in the Orange 27 Muka Motorsport car is Mikkel Jensen, the Danish driver. Uh, Marcus Palmer in his home country in sixth place. Santino Ferrucci with a good start from 13th up to 7th. Arjun Maini in eighth place. Lance Stroll is ninth. Giovinazzi still stuck in 10th place and just about in the points. 
It's extraordinary that uh, Rosenquist Castillo have uh, got away, and there is a huge, huge gap before we get back to Charles Leclerc in uh, P4, and then a whole gaggle of cars behind. There's Callum Islet then running in uh, P3, who's uh, just a second back off of uh, uh, Cassidy, who is P2, and Felix Rosenquist has a three-second advantage at the front of the pack at the moment, but all three of them really have broken away to the tune of some 12 seconds from P4 and then the rest of the order. That's right. So there is Callum uh, Islet keeping that gap just over a second to Nick Cassidy. So you're at the front of the shot there in second place. European karting champion last year in the KF Championship. Callum Eilock with uh, Red Bull backing. With a great team, Carlin Motorsport, and all of their Formula 3 success over the years and single-seater success. And one of the drivers with the VW engine, the race leader, Felix Rosenquist, both powered by the Mercedes. And there in that shot, you could see it was virtually the length of the start-finish straight, wasn't it, between mm. uh, P3 and uh, P4. So they all cross the uh, timing line now and... Uh, Jensen just once again just uh, having to uh, swap into uh, defence mode from uh, the attack from uh, Marcus Palmer who is uh, running in P6 right behind him then Santino Ferrucci who is running uh, P7 and then behind uh, Ferrucci of course Argemini and then Lance Stroll and Giovinazzi 34 and a half points clear is Felix Rosenquist in the championship of Antonio Giovinazzi He's going to get close to doubling that if it stays like this because mm. he's going to pick up 25 points. And at the moment, Giovinazzi is only going to pick up a single point for finishing in 10th place. Dennis is not going to be in the points, although the car is going quickly now, albeit way, way down the order at the back in 33rd position. But he was at least, when he got the car back out, able to test it and it looked fine and he got some reasonably good lap times, which bodes well for the uh, races later on in the weekend. Rosenquist has just crossed the finish line then. Through he goes with a 121.6. For the first time in a while, somebody's quicker than him, and that's Nick Cassidy, who's a tenth quicker. He's mm -hmm. still three seconds behind. Nick, though, has pulled away from Callum Eilat, who's a couple of tenths behind him on that lap. So the gap's opened out to 1.2 seconds from Cassidy back to Eilat. There is Leclerc then, and this sort of bottleneck that he's uh, yes. causing in fourth place. Mikkel Jensen coming back at him now, isn't he, after a couple of quiet laps? Yes, I think Mikkel Jensen has just, uh, just decided for the last couple of laps, really, to get out of the dirty air and just uh, uh, focus on being behind that of course just allowed Palmer to get ever closer to him but I think you're right I think uh, Jensen is just turning the wick up again once more and we'll uh, go for another t attack on uh, Charles Leclerc and you're absolutely right because the whole gaggle of cars that are uh, tucked up behind that point P4 driver Charles Leclerc at the moment and of course that he's playing into the hands to the top three of Rosa Chris Cassidy and Eilat who are just uh, well so far up the road it's untrue really are in uh, their own little pack so the uh, Lance Stroll car there we can see car number 25 which is running in uh, P9 and this is Jake Dennis back in again because uh, it's the new nose on the front isn't it which we saw being replaced so that's the second time in for Jake Dennis yeah I think that's them pulling him out of the race now let's save the car yep. you see they're putting their wet tires on just to take it back to the uh, garage let's save our tires of which there is a limit on what you can use during the course of the weekend let's save the engine there is no point pounding around in 33rd position because you're not going to get any points so we've tested the car we know it's okay you did a couple of decent laps let's save it for later on which is I think absolutely the right decision great shame for Jake though isn't it because as you say you know his position in the uh, in the championship with uh, Felix Rosenquist who you know looks odds on to bank Max doesn't he yeah of those in the championship fight J uh, Jake's had the, the most non-point scoring finishes so he's had the most wins but he he's also had uh, you know a number of races where he, I'm afraid hasn't been able to pick up points that'll be the eighth time this season that he doesn't finish in the points I think it's his fourth out and out retirement mm. but he's not out of it yet so he's got good grids for races two and three yeah. but Rosenquist has definitely had the edge. I mean, at one point in the second qualifying session yesterday, up until the last two or three minutes, Rosenquist was half a second quicker than anybody. It was pretty immense, really. In the end, he, I think it was three tenths quicker. But, you know, he's been going out, not doing that many laps in qualifying, just banging in what he needs to bang in. And he's just looked super confident, super laid back. I mean, he has won everything, hasn't he, in terms of Formula 3, apart from this championship. He's won at Macau, he's won the Masters, he's won the Pogrom Prix. 
it's just this one that he needs to tick off the list. And, uh, you know, if he'd had perhaps more funding, he, he might have been off trying things like GP3 or GP2. Mm. But he hasn't had, you know, immense amounts of sponsorship behind him. So he's try really trying to make a name for himself by winning the championship this year. Doing a, doing a good job at the moment. Jake Dennis uh, in. I think maybe he went out on those he works, did go actually. Out. Yeah. He did go did out. a lap on them. I thought they were just putting them on to take him back to the pits. So just a test session this has now become uh, for Jake. In fact, now he does get out of the car. And you can see what I mean about him being a tall driver, can't you? Might be the tallest driver in the paddock, actually. So disappointment, I'm afraid, for Jake Dennis. Charlotte Clerk in fourth place has a chance of... There he is, in fact. A chance of wrapping up the rookie championship this weekend. He's mm -hmm. 106 points clear uh, of George Russell. I know it's not his... The main thing he wants to win is the overall championship, but... Uh, it looks like he could well wrap that up at least this weekend, Charles Leclerc. Now, these top three that we watch as Rosenquist, then Casti and Eilert go through, have a margin of 16 seconds over the rest of the pack. That's incredible, isn't it? The pace that these three are, are showing them. Felix Rosenquist, bear in mind, has got some 3.1 seconds over Nick Casti. Look, wait a, a short while before the rest of the um, the rest of the pack come into uh, even come into the shot and led by uh, Charles Leclerc who's running in uh, P4 the gap's growing as well in yeah, terms of the pace uh, difference between the top three and the others so they're now going about a second a lap quicker than anybody behind them at the start of the race they were you know three or four tenths quicker on average but they're you know the gap is growing in terms of how much quicker they are so they're they've been quick and they seem to have been able to look after the tires a bit better not that tire wear has really been an issue here even at the end of qualifying sessions yesterday people were able to get good times so it's not too hard on the tires at this circuit of action here in the uh, midfield Petro Fittipaldi just behind, just at the head of that group now, and making another place up is Alex Albon. He's deep into the corner. Can he make it stick? Yes, he can. Get a get of Raul Hyman there, the South African driver. He's another BRDC F4 graduate. And uh, the West Tech driver having to concede the position there. So that's a change for 13th. Alex Albon making a place up here, but he's still some way away from the points. And whilst that was going on, George Russell having a go as well and continues to have a go now at... Uh, Rao Hyman, George Russell, of course, suffering that um, grid penalty because of the engine change. And you, you know, were extolling his virtues of how quick he was in quali. Yeah, George, uh, of course, already a race winner this year. He won his very first weekend in the championship at Silverstone and the one circuit he knew is a replay of a bit of a, a bit of typical Formula 3 racing there. Everybody go for the same corner. Ral Hyman having to concede. This was earlier on, wasn't it? As, uh, yeah, it was. Uh, I think the lap before as Menezes got past and then this is the move that we did see from Alex Albon. So you can see that in that one lap, Menezes had pulled right away, hadn't he, in the number yeah. four car. And then George Russell as you can say, simultaneously attacking Pietro Fittipaldi. So some good scraps going on here as they try to, to pick up some points. And what that proved there and gave graphic uh, indication of what happens is when you are in a little fight and you're making a move, you know, the car in front is like, uh, it's, um, you know, really good news, isn't it? Because they're just able to get up the road because yeah. they're not having, to, uh, not having to focus on that at all. Rosenquist leading then. There is our P3 driver, Callum Eilert then with the Red Bull livery. Ooh. Whoa! Getting a bit lively then, the car, Was. wasn't it? Um, he's exactly a second behind uh, Nick Cassidy. That's Mikkel Jensen, though, who's still tucked up behind Charles Leclerc. And to be fair, you know, there have been moments where Mikkel Jensen has really, really tried and uh, Leclerc has defended and defended well. And the threat has never really come, has it? And equally yeah. so, that from uh, uh, Palmer and also Santino Ferrucci. And Ferrucci was one of the most uh, you know, <laughs> enjoyable drivers to watch at Portimao because he, he, he was just absolutely determined to go for everything but uh, doesn't look like he quite has the pace in the car to be able to do so today no feisty Ferrucci that's uh, definitely uh, a good way to describe <laughs> yes. his driving and you know he's, he's got up there at the start of this race he's made up a lot of positions I think he said to him at the start of the race where was he back in the uh, seventh throw of the grid wasn't he if he said at the start of the race you'll finish seventh I think he'd have taken that yeah but uh, you never know he's got Arjun Miney behind him though he's also been quick mm -hmm. but yeah there's nothing between these guys fourth fifth sixth seventh eighth ninth tenth eleventh positions all lapping pretty much the same lap times as one another here and even if you're a tenth quicker or tenth and a half quicker it's difficult to find a way through here at the Nürburgring which is why we haven't really seen Giovinazzi making any more progress so still there in tenth place we saw that twitch from Callum Eilert. You know, he's on for his first podium 
in car racing, his first podium in Formula 3 in his first season, yep. yet he is still pushing like crazy to try and catch Nick Cassidy for second place rather than sitting there thinking, I'll be happy with that, as Marcus Pommer just has a little show over the nose down the inside to Mikkel Jensen there. This is the battle for fifth place. Ferrucci is just waiting to pick up the pieces, isn't he? You can just see that there. Go on, you two, you have a battle and I'll take advantage of that. <laughs> um, so, of course, it's Mikkel Jens, Marcus Palmer, and uh, Santino Ferrucci running in P5, 6, and uh, 7. There is the Marcus Palmer car then, in the middle of the uh, two Mooka Motorsport liveried uh, machines. And that, of course, plays into the hands a little bit of Charles Leclerc, who's able just to gap um, Mikkel Jensen a little bit as they take uh, the curbs through the NGK chicane. And never ceases to amaze me just how much curb they take uh, through that uh, chicane with these... Um, very, very sophisticated uh, Formula 3 cars. But very strong cars yes. as well, aren't they? Very strong. Right, you see uh, them braking. Uh, we see Jensen running wide, sort of being sucked into his line and also going a bit wide was Marcus Palmer there. Not quite so, not quite so larish. And here's, here's uh, another bit of action. Raul Hyman now having caught back up oh. to uh, the number four car of Menace says. I'm not sure he made contact with the back of uh, the Jagonia IAM car, but he had to get on the brakes pretty sharpish there and almost sent himself into the barriers. So Raul Hyman having a battling performance, but uh, it's dropped him back now to 16th place. So that's why he's suddenly fallen away from the top 12. <laughs> Marcus Palmer is almost trying to <laughs> warm his tires up here, isn't he? I can't get past you, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and unnerve you. Yes. You know, if you just keep seeing my nose in your oh. mirrors. Oh, twitch there from behind as well from Ferrucci. <laughs> They're all pushing like crazy here as we go to the final third of the race. Well, it's absolutely extraordinary to watch, isn't it? There's Leclerc going through, there's uh, Mikkel Jensen, then it's Marcus Palmer, then it is Santino Ferrucci uh, with Archimani behind. And, uh, well... It is. Leclerc is almost uh, rubbing his hands a bit, isn't he? Because whilst these are all battling, he's able just to gap, gap them a little bit. There's um, Marcus Palmer then, who's in the middle of that little uh, gaggle, if you like. And uh, they're beginning to line up behind Ferrucci now as well, with uh, Arjun Maini and Lance Stroll and, uh, of course, Antonio Giovinazzi also. That's right. Alex Albon up to 12th, George Russell up to 13th now. And both going pretty quickly, particularly Alban, 41.8 for mm. him. He is, I think I'm right saying, yes, the quickest man on the track at the moment uh, with uh, in that first sector, with no exception. So very quick first sector for Alban. He's uh, lap times 123 fours as well, so uh, comparable with those ahead of him. But he's got two or three seconds to try and make up plus positions to gain if he wants to get into the points. But I wouldn't be too surprised if we see that signature car of Alex Alban getting onto the back of this group in the not too distant future. Trouble is, if you do have a go and try and get points, you are, of course, always having to be mindful of the fact that there's another race later on today yes. and another race tomorrow. And, you know, yes, you want to go for it and try and get the points, but you've got also got to look after that car for the other two races, not uh, damage it too much. But it's Rosenquist has crossed the line, a 122.0 for him. 040-048 for Cassidy, almost matches his lap time, and a 122-053 for Callum Eilat. So within 13 thousandths of a second of each other, the top three are now lapping. The gap's pretty much then obviously staying the same between them. There is Giovinazzi then, who is second in the championship. Five wins this year, 17 podiums. Been a great year for the Italian. 22 seconds between P3 and P4. Yeah. That's extraordinary. <laughs> it is when you consider that, you know, in most qualifying sessions, for most circuits, for most of the year, you've had probably a second a lap is all that's been between the top 20 cars. <laughs> Amazing. So, the top three are the ones that are uh, lapping in the 122s and the very low 122s, and then we get up to the, you know, it's the one... 123 uh, a seven from Leclerc last time round. 123 twos from uh, Jensen and Palmer. So it's the reason that gap is increasing between P3 and P4 to the uh, margin that it is. There we go. Just about in the background now, we can see Alex Alban in 12th place. So he's starting to reel them in again in the first sector. He's three or four tenths quicker than the pack ahead. Catching a passing though might be a different story for him, as we yep. see Santino Ferrucci there in the Muka Motorsport car. Berlin-based team, so again, racing in their home country, not exactly their part of Germany. American Motorsport also run team in the DTM Championship. Having a much uh, 
stronger year in many respects, at least consistency-wise. It's the team that Felix Rosenquist used to drive for and didn't have a particularly happy season last year, although his teammate, Lucas Auer, who's just got pole position, in fact, he's made in pole position in DTM before this race started. Lucas Auer drove for Mooka Motorsport, got on the podium a couple of times last year and did a good job to finish fourth in the championship. Super slow mos there, uh, showing you just how much curb they do take and how the, uh, the actual shape of the tyre deflects as all that pressure is... Uh, put through and uh, well Santino Ferrucci right on the back of uh, Marcus Pommer now that's the battle that's going on for uh, P6 that's where Marcus Pommer sits and Santino Ferrucci very very close to him but equally uh, Pommer trying to uh, keep Mikkel Jensen within target sight as well but he's just having to focus on defend from uh, the uh, Santino Ferrucci car and uh, Ferrucci then moment as you say he can uh, can be quicker he can match the lap time it's finding a way past isn't it and he's never truthfully looked close to being able to do that yeah out of the bit curver and through had some back Pommer definitely went away by about half a half a car length or so but in the tighter twistier section uh, through the Mercedes arena at the start of the lap he looked like he was struggling a bit to get the car out of the corners and Ferrucci was quicker at the first sector that's the new Artline engineering car, isn't it? That's being driven by Harold uh, Schlegel Mill. We can see there. And, well, about to be um, passed by Felix Rosenquist, the uh, Prima Power Team uh, driver who, well, had a phenomenal race from uh, the very start, hasn't he? And we're into uh, final five laps or so of, uh, of this race. Another fantastic performance from Felix Rosenquist thus far. Hasn't put a foot wrong and furthermore has been lapping so so quickly and fast in fact his last lap Chris are 121.790 in comparison to everyone else in 22s and 23s yeah Felix has uh, it's been the best qualifier this year on average fourth on the grid uh, was his average at the start of the year and he's got that down to sort of third third and a half on the grid if you look at the average in in recent rounds so his qualifying started well and has got even better mm. there was an issue with the car right at the start of the season where he looked like he was going to get a triple pole at Silverstone and then there was a slight technical issue with the car, the dimensions of the car. So he's excluded from the second qualifying session at start at the back. But if you discount that one, you look at his pure performances, he's, he's been the best qualifier. And it stood him in, in good stead, which is why he's uh, on course for his 10th race win of the season. Just saw a shot of uh, Alban really pressuring uh, Seta Kamara, as you predicted would happen. Alex Alban was... Uh, setting lap times that would put him onto the uh, back of Seta Kamara, and that indeed is the case. The closing stages of this race. Last driver into the points, of course, is uh, Antonio Giovinazzi, who is running in P10. Then it is Seta Kamara, Alban and uh, George Russell running P12 and P13. Yeah, Alex Alban, uh, who's uh, based in the UK, but runs with a Thai national uh, licence. And uh, another former European karting champion in KF3, just like Callum Eilat, who runs in third place, but has some car racing experience. It's, uh, he's a rookie in terms of F3, but he raced a couple of seasons in Formula Renault. But he's made a win last year in the Formula Renault Euro Cup, which he finished third overall. And uh, Alex has had some really good uh, performances this year. As I say, one of the top rookies, and currently sixth overall in the championship, Charles Leclerc. Is the best rookie in the overall championship third. George Russell fifth in the standings. Then you've got Alex in sixth place. There is Charles Leclerc, the Monogas driver. Just looking to grind out the points really at the moment because he doesn't look to be in a position to challenge for race wins or, or really podiums of late, does he? But no. just making the most of what he's got at the moment. He has won four races this season. As I say, it's been a bit sparse of late. And there is Tonio Giovinazzi who looks like he might just have to settle for that single point in 10th place, which is going to be a real blow for the championship for him. And, you know, he'll lose out by 24 points to Felix Rosenquist. So he's going swimmingly for the Swede at the head of the field. So as the pack turn in then, and that is the uh, backmarking car being passed now by uh, Callum Eilert, the backmarking car of uh, Schlegel Milk. And... Uh, you were saying earlier on what an impressive performance this is from Callum Eilert when you consider, you know, rookie into the uh, championship. Uh, sat with him on the plane coming back from uh, Portimao. Super young guy as well. Yeah, and he's one of the drivers that you see 
you know, always in and around the car in the, in the Carlin awning. He's always paying attention to what's going you on. You made that point, actually, yeah. yes, that he spends a lot of time in the paddock, doesn't he? He's yeah. not... Um, with the team, yeah. 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 No, very, seems to be very hands-on, learning a lot. And learning, you know, like the rookies out there, he's learning all the circuits as well. I'd chat with him. As, you know, I said, why do you think you, you know, it's clicked at this circuit a bit more than some of the others? Sure. And he said, well, I've just, I've always loved driving this on my PlayStation. <laughs> <laughs> he's always, you know, he's got a bit of experience. I said, do you do that much? Do you, you know, do you try and learn the circuits by, you know, going on simulators and computer games? A little bit, not that much, really. You just learn as you go. But it does have, you know, a bit of a help to at least understand which way the corners are going to go. Yeah. So it's a circuit which he just gels with. He doesn't particularly know why, but he's, he's gone really well here. And as I say, he has been improving his performances, but not necessarily getting the results. He's had some good runs, hasn't he? At Spa, he was just off the podium mm. in fourth. He had a fifth place earlier in the season. He was in the points in the first uh, round at Silverstone. In fact, he's very often, you know, he's, he's picked up points in races, but in the lower end of the top ten. So Callum going well here. He's the top rookie in third place. Rookies are third, fourth and fifth in this race. Callum Eilock, Charles Leclerc and Mikkel Jensen. Just as we reach the closing stages of this race, I just feel that Giovinazzi is uh, uh, really, really pushing Lance Stroll now. Lance Stroll's going to be very, very difficult to overtake. Lance Stroll himself, uh, of course, running uh, in P9. He's not going to be prepared to give that position away to uh, Antonio Giovinazzi. But just of the last uh, few shots that we've seen, I've just felt Giovinazzi has looked a little bit more aggressive. Lance Stroll, of course, uh, see the uh, Ferrari Driver Academy on the uh, side of the... Uh, car there it's uh, in fact the uh, final lap so uh, Felix Rosenquist then who has a margin of some 6.1 seconds over P2 Nick Cassidy and then uh, Callum Isla a further second behind but it's been another masterful performance hasn't it from Felix Rosenquist absolutely some quick mental arithmetic I reckon he'll be 58 and a half points clear of Giovinazzi in the championship now if he ends this weekend 75 points or more ahead of his nearest rival. He'll have won the title. It's not inconceivable the Swede could wrap it up here and nobody's going to be able to match the number of wins that he's had this season should they be tying on points with him. And to be fair, this, with him finishing uh, P1 and uh, Giovinazzi, as you say, just banking one point is really helping him towards that potential, isn't it? Yeah, Leclerc fourth, Dennis out of the points as we know. So it couldn't have gone much better really for the Swede. But as we've seen so often, you know, he's got pole, he's got a good start and he's just been in a league of his own and very, very consistent of late as well. So Felix Rosenquist looking good here as we go into the closing stages of the race. He's suddenly six seconds clear of Nick Cassidy. But a word for Nick Cassidy, this is only his second outing of the season. He was out at Portimao. He qualified well, but the race is weren't too kind to him as the flag comes out and Felix Rosenquist takes his 10th win of the season here a great job by the Swede to extend his championship lead Nick Cassidy in only his second outing this season gets a podium spot and Callum Eilock for the first time in his short but impressive car racing career takes his first podium in third place this is the battle for fourth getting tight Dave yeah Marcus Pommer there and uh, certainly the one under pressure now is Charlotte Clerk as well from uh, Mikkel Jensen. Is anything going to change as they head towards the timing line? I don't think it's going to, but it was a valiant effort right at the end. Absolutely. Nose to tail as they cross the line there. Leclerc and Jensen, a tenth of a second between them, but Leclerc hangs on for crucial points in fourth place. Jensen fifth there, second and third in the rookie classification. Marcus Pommer with another good drive. He struggled at the start of the year with Motor Park, who, as I say, new team to Formula 3 European racing. But with all of his experience and Motor Park's experience, they've been competitive in the last few rounds. And it's another good uh, drive by Marcus in sixth place. A good drive as well from Santino Ferrucci from 13th on the grid to finish in seventh place. Arjun Maini, who had a very good start as well. He came from 10th to finish in eighth. Lance Stroll, ninth. Antonio Giovinazzi will stay second in the championship with that single, but maybe crucial point for 10th spot. But Felix Rosenquist with a dominant performance there, Dave. Absolutely stellar performance from Felix Rosenquist, who, you know, with all his experience, well, that was proven during the course of the race, did not put one foot wrong. And uh, Rene Ross in there, the uh, Prima Power team, absolute class act, Felix Rosenquist. And, well, he's banked another maximum points haul and we will see him on the uh, top step of the podium once again. So the Prima Power team uh, congratulating themselves down there and 
Done a great job in terms of uh, giving Felix Rosenquist the very, very best that they can, and uh, he's used every single bit of it, hasn't he? They won the title two years ago with Rafael Marcello. He's moved up to GP2 now. They won it last year with Esteban Ocon. Could they win it this year with Felix Rosenquist, who's, don't forget, in his first season with that team. It's been quite some force. And six and a half seconds he wins by in the end. His Prima Power team at teammate Nick Cassidy there in second place and mixed fortunes of course because they lost their another championship contender early on uh, with damage to the car for Jake Dennis third place to Callum Eilert fourth place to Leclerc fifth place to Jensen sixth to Pommer Ferrucci seventh uh, Argemini eighth Lance Stroll ninth Giovinazzi tenth the other point scorer Seti Pamara just outside the points in 11th place and there you can see the rest of the results on the screen the only non-finisher Jake Dennis. They got the car back out, did some laps, so it looks good for later on. But they uh, decided to call it a day when it was pretty obvious he wasn't going to score any points. So Felix Rosenquist gives a high five to Nick Cassidy. Very likeable guys, Felix. And uh, so all this experience in Formula 3. But it doesn't necessarily get any easier because the competition in this championship, Dave, seems to get tougher and tougher every season. You're absolutely right. And Callum Eilert will be absolutely thrilled, won't he? Um, I know I keep droning on about this point, but I think I should make it. 28.6, the margin between P3 and P4. That's a huge gap, Chris. Um, huge, huge gap. So uh, Felix Rosenquist takes the win from Nick Cassidy and uh, Callum Eilert, then uh, P3, then it was Leclerc, Jensen, Poma, Ferrucci, Miney, Stroll, and uh, Giovinazzi, and uh, super slow-mo of the master at work. Yeah.